put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Abandon all hope, ye who enter. Battlefield Earth. Move review. It's the year 3000. Mankind is all but extinct and living in irradi irradiated areas because creatures from the imaginelessly named planet Cyclo, which are basically people in badly designed black armor with dreadlocks and a little bit of, you know, like a couple of them look like really ugly, one of them looks like Pearl from Blade 1, but apart from that they're basically just people. It's the most of all the alien designs I've ever seen committed to film, it is the one that is the most devoid of creative creativity. And they keep us as slaves, because apparently, you know, the people who made this movie, you know, didn't realize that Planet of the Apes had already been made. This is not exactly a new story. One of the humans, Johnny, gets captured and uses every opportunity he gets to try to escape. At one point, they hose him and some other humans down, and for some reason they're still clothed. I'd imagine that a bath would go easier if you took their clothes off, but whatever. You know, you just, you do your thing. You're the one in charge of that. And they, they like, grapple, and he gets the hose, and he turns it on the people, and just, and, and you're sitting there wondering why, that's a question you ask yourself a lot during this movie, why, why, and yeah, he, he just, every, every chance he gets, he tries to escape. And obviously most of them fail, because otherwise the movie would be five minutes long, and I'm not that lucky. And suddenly, at some point in the movie, he does realize that maybe, just, just maybe, he should think a little further forward. And fortunately for him, the humans in this movie are matched in their bottomless stupidity by the Cyclos. Because in spite of how many times the Cyclos see them attack or see Johnny... Johnny gets a gun in his hand very soon after he's first captured. This is not a spoiler. It happens in the first 20 minutes of the movie or so. By the way, the Cyclos, for being such utterly boring designs are built up like you wouldn't believe. I, that's, that's like one of the few things this movie actually does in any kind of decent level and then, you know, it's just a major anti-climax. Besides, they actually spoil, I mean, you saw the cover before, they spoil what the Cyclos look like, so yeah. But yeah, in spite of how many times just the Cyclos seem to be having this contest of who can outstupid the rest of them because they just they don't pay any kind of attention to the you know the, I mean the escape attempts they treat as a mild nuisance and 
yeah, they just, they don't take it at all seriously. I, I realize they think that the, so, as they call them, man animals, animals, are stupid. And they are, in this movie, they are beyond what, I don't know, maybe it's the radiation. And maybe there's been inbreeding, and maybe everyone was dropped on their head repeatedly as an infant. That would begin to explain the level of stupid. This was written by L. Ron Hubbard, by the way, so it really makes you question Scientologists. If you didn't already. Anyway, they think that the animals are stupid, and so they don't... But still, it just, it... You couldn't possibly pay so little attention to... Yeah. The movie rips, rips off a couple of other movies. Matrix, and I know Matrix, you know, right, this was like soon after The Matrix came out, and everyone was saying, you know, oh, this is ripping off The Matrix. But this really does, very, very clearly, and for no reason. The scene didn't need to be like that at all, and it just, yeah. And Star Wars. And then there are a couple of things in the film that just make absolutely no sense. There's one point, one of the dozens of escape attempts is Johnny gets a brick and a gun. Well, yeah, <laughs> he actually does, as I said before. But Johnny gets a brick and uses it to break the lock and run off because apparently he didn't realize from the first couple of escape attempts that it's not going to be that easy. How does he get a brick? I don't know, I guess he finds one in, you know, they, they are, you know... Actually, I don't know what they're doing. At, at a couple of points, they're seen, like, banging rocks, I guess, with, with hammers and stuff. I, I don't really know what exactly it is they're doing. Some kind of slave labor. So, you know, obviously, he gets, like, a brick from that. No, nope. a tower has to be knocked down. How does a tower get knocked down, you ask? A plane flies into it and, and, and apparently through it. The, crane, the plane, plane doesn't actually crash. Is there an explanation for why this plane crashed? No! No, there's, there's no explanation. It just... It's just bad writing. And that's going to be the answer to probably around 90% of the excellent questions and points raised about this movie. It's just bad writing. The acting is horrendous. John Travolta chews so much scenery that I don't know how there was any left for the others to... You know, I mean, John Travolta, you could actually make the case that maybe he's not exactly the best actor in the world. This has... Forrest Whitaker, and he, he does the same, and that just blows my mind. The human stupidity, I just, I just have to further make, make the point. I, they find statues, and rather than presume that maybe at some point man-made statues. Instead, they figure that they must be gods that were frozen, or people that... They, they find mannequins and think that they're people who were frozen by angry gods, and all this kind of thing. I realize that in the absence of proper evidence and reasoning and you know, in, in such a situation, when finding something that you just do not understand, you will come up with a supernatural experiment. Well, that's quite often the case. But they just... If, if, even, if, even if one accepts the sheer level of mental retardation exhibited 
by the people. Actually, that still leaves. Why Why are the cyclos so freaking stupid? How could they come up with all this advanced technology? Excuse me, advanced technology, if they were that stupid. But anyway, let's say that the humans were that stupid. You don't have to show it to us. There are some things that are so obnoxious and intolerable that you tend not to see them in film. And when you do, it's played for laughs. It's so that people can sit and mock something for being that stupid. But in this movie, it is not a joke. It's, it's, I guess, it's, it's played seriously, basically. And it's fine that these people are that stupid, but the Hollywood standard for something like that, when, when, when it's people that we're supposed to care about, I, I couldn't bring myself to care about anyone or anything in this movie, when it's, when it's people we're supposed to care about, you tone down the intolerable. That's that's just what you do. You know, this this is not some indie film that is showing the harsh reality of something and you still you accept it because it's real, it's human. No, this is this is pure Hollywood. It's it's in fact extremely badly written even by Hollywood standards. Even by like the the worst I, I think this is supposed to be a popcorn movie. And and I guess it basically is an action sci-fi film. The action is rather unengaging. I mean, it does all culminate in a climax. Well, it, it, it does. There is a climax at the end of the film. And there are some... There, there are some physical struggles and chases here and there in the film. But most of it is just all these dumb escape attempts and then the petty politics of Planet Cyclo. And that actually, I mean, John Travolta's character, Turl, I think, yeah, this this movie melted my brain, so if I get names wrong, that's, that might be why. Turl. He does have a character. There's something about how he... He's basically like the security... That guy. He's in charge of security. On this planet, you know, on planet Earth. And he doesn't want to be. He wants to be a conqueror. And he isn't allowed to be because there was basically something about he was like with a senator's daughter or something, and yeah, as revenge, as as punishment, he you know is made to you know remain security chief, and so he tries to outsmart his you know he he tries to make a plan to get you know off the planet and such, and and that actually. If you just took that subplot, that, that part of the plot, out of the movie, you made it less intolerable in the acting department, then that would actually maybe make for a decent enough short subject, I suppose. It's just that everything else in the film is unwatchable. I'd say a good third of the shots in this film. Just just think about that. Third. A third of the shots in the film. At one point I counted like 20 consecutive shots. Are Dutch. Dutch angle. Tilted camera. At points it's actually downright disorienting. Where it looks like someone is walking on the wall. Or like they're... they're facing the wrong way or something. It just, it confuses you. I, I recently watched a Nostalgia Chick video where she talked about this movie and I think it was Roger Ebert that she quoted, his review of this film, about how the director understands that sometimes in film 
the camera will be tilted to the side. But he does not understand why. And that, that very much sums up the cinematography for this movie. The special effects are dreadful. The, most of the animation does not top what could be achieved in the 80s. And once again, this, this movie is from like 2000. The guns of the Cyclos are a very good example. They fire these tiny little green, I guess, laser beams. The original, you know, the original Star Wars movie, 1977. I'm not talking about the 19... 1997, you know, special edition. I'm talking about before. The lasers in that look better. And the guns are wildly... Is it, what's it called? Inconsistent, by the way. If a shot hits debris, it will go flying off. But if it hits a person, it'll just stun them. I'm not sure there's much else I can say without going into spoilers. There are some very odd editing moments here and there, like something, part of a conversation is repeated like two or three times, I guess for emphasis. Sets and designs can sometimes be decent enough. Although I, I, I really would not subject myself to this movie just for the visuals. There, there are far better visuals in other movies, and many of those movies are f just far better uh, on all other levels. If you even consider watching this movie, just be aware, it, it really, it, it hurts. It literally gets in there and just... MST3King it is almost a must, just, just to get through it. And even so, it'll, it'll hurt bad. And, and as you start watching it, as you start watching it and think that it's it's as it's it's impossibly stupid, it gets worse. It actually keeps getting worse, and and every consecutive as the film progresses, it just it it only keeps getting worse. It never gets better, and it it even even when you think that it can't possibly get stupider, it keeps getting. Stupider until it gets to the very end, and the mountain of stupid is is overpowering, and the film finally ends, and the credits roll. The film is viable as a torture method, and a test of manhood. but not a source of entertainment. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.